Hello everyone and welcome back. This is TechMedic. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a 100 hours inside of Nightingale. And I just want to ask, please understand that I do realize that this is an early access game. I do realize that the developers have a lot of work ahead of them and that this version of Nightingale does not re represent the vision that they have for the game itself. But currently off the basic mechanics that are inside of the game in general, versus the limitations of having hosted realms on Google servers. We're seeing the limitations already. A lot of people that are hitting the Ascended Realms are pretty much stopping at that point because they do have the equipment and the gear to go ahead and challenge the realms. Like I'm currently in. I'm currently in an Extreme Provisioners um, realm at the moment, which is an Ascended version, which means that the monsters have increased HP and damage towards me. But you know, that being said, with all the flavor that you can change of the realm itself through cards, it still doesn't uh, change the fact that a lot of these things are repetitive inside of the game. So when you open your map and you actually take a look at the map itself, each map is 2.2 kilometers squared. And we also understand that there is only a playable area of a 16 tile area that you're actually going to have points of interest resources and all that stuff you seldomly will have points of interest that will go ahead and travel like these uh hunting fabled creatures or an message trader that'll be way out of the way but these are on the outskirts of what you actually can play they did talk about a lot of the um ability to have bigger maybe 10 kilometer 15 kilometer squared areas to go ahead and play in and multi-biome play playable realms but that's not in the cards and they want to stick to this system however this system is very repetitive you're always going to get this this limited number of occupations there's nothing dynamic about these things these are just pretty much static inside of the game you're always going to get a fey portal with the occupations around it the flavor of the cave or the temple that you're going to enter is going to be a little different but not much the flavor of everything is going to stay pretty much the same. You're going to get an essence trader or an essence trader that will go ahead and spawn for buildable materials. You will also get a number of these uh, Bastels of Agility as well as the uh, Bastel of Intellect, which are puzzles that you can go ahead and complete. And you're also going to get one to two of these defense things. So everything, no matter what biome it is, it's always going to be within a 4x4 four four tile. It's always going to have the same different points of interest. Not same different, but the same points of interest that are there. The only key thing that's going to change is the map orientation and geography that is actually available to you. So it kind of begs the question, like, what's the real threat going to be going forward inside of Nightingale? Well, we get little hints about that with Puck. And we get hints through the diary pages of what's actually happening inside of the world itself. Uh, you do meet Bass Reeves, which is hunting a fugitive from, I think it's the 30 Elephants gang. So the 30 Elephants is a malicious human entity that we can probably expect to have a hostile faction, like a bandit faction that uses weapons. And um, I'm looking forward to that because having to kill an undead or a demonic entity over and over no matter what survival game is is kind of played out at this point and people are tired of you know dealing with the same old uh pale enemies that we have with the melee the bomb thrower the gliding casters and the swarm of uh zombies that we get in each different wave whenever we visit one of these occupation points uh, another faction that was discussed and probably will show up is not only a faction, but a biome itself, which is the winter area. Puck talks about this when we visit the watch, and he warns that, you know, they're gaining, uh, they're recognizing our player's ability in the realms, and that the Fey are upset, and they will come and, you know, kind of put an end to humanity. And uh, this is a winter faction that is Fey uh, in origin, so we can expect them as an entity to go ahead and combat. And the game itself is, you know, 
explorable to a point, but again, there's a lot of repetitiveness in what's actually available inside of the game. The only thing, like I said, is the geography is going to be different. You can reset portals and you can visit things, but the exploration is taken out of the game because a lot of these patterns that you see inside of your crafting book are bought from traders. And traders are all found here in this tab. So the card combinations that you play, Desert Antiquarian all the way down to Ascended Swamp Herbarium, Ascended Provisioner, Essence Trader, these should be all found naturally so that you can play these cards. And then when you find the Essence Trader, it'll document it here. But it seems like Inflection Games went ahead and handheld the player and said, well, if you need something, it's all found right here. Which is a very bad thing when it comes to taking the player out of the immersion and actually showing them where everything's at. Which kind of like, you know, you do learn augmentations inside of the world from some of the Vassals of Agility as well as Vassals of Intellect. But it's not the things that you would think, you know, you would think that you would find the recipe for a weapon. But you know those are actually purchasable things and if you were one of the unfortunate players that went and farmed the apex dungeons for the ability to buy the schematic for the weebly revolver and then you went to you know uh what is his name um the quest npc you actually get this pistol schematic for free so you just burned like 1300 uh epic infusions not only that, there's a lot of refinement that needs to happen inside of the crafting uh, menus themselves. Things like where do we find uh, how to craft specific materials that elude a lot of players. I know that people are looking at like, all right, how do I make foil, you know? You would think that you would make foil and foil when it comes to mine is like a, a roll, a sheet that you would you know, possibly forge at a blacksmith, but instead you make it at a, a weaving loom, uh, which is a, of excellent quality. So there's a lot of things that are in there in the crafting system itself, and there's just too many tiers of items. There are thousands of items that you can go ahead and collect, craft, or, you know, get from certain areas. So having that truncated and having that actually able to you know say all right well it's either a prey meat or it's a predator meat or it's an exotic meat would be more feasible than it's an ox meat it's a wolf meat it's a you know it's a harpy hide it's a hippo hide it's a you know whatever it is bear hide it's a it, the list goes on and on and it goes on and on for fi uh, fibers and fabrics and it goes on and on for lumbers it goes on and on for ore and gems and everything like that to where it just becomes too much uh, especially where you spend a lot of time in the beginning realms but then eventually you jump out of that and you're right away you're getting gear once you hit the watch you're just burning through the rest of the content because you're becoming an OP, you're figuring out, okay, I get a lot of the ingots and the materials that I actually need, and it makes 90% of the materials in your storage irrelevant, uh, which is a bad thing. So not only do you have repetitiveness, but you have, you know, just too much saturation of materials inside of the game itself. The game is fun, but they took the exploration out of it with these essence traders. I think that all patterns, regardless of what they are, from a weapon pattern to an ammunition pattern to a cloak to a hat to all that stuff, should have been left up to RNG and placed inside of these points of interest. And the points of interest need to be multiplied by at least five times per realm so that it gives the player like, man, this, this realm really is something. I cleared out every nook and cranny. I still didn't find that Calcarian headpiece that I wanted, you know? So I guess I'm going to reset and play again. And it would just give that emphasis of randomness to the player to actually, you know, craft these things versus having a guidebook say, this is where everything is at. Go get it and run into the extreme areas. 
because right now the extreme areas they're offering just bullet sponge level content and a lot of people didn't like that in um, the division and I'm pretty sure people don't like that here you know it does give precedence to using up more ammo but again you know having these creatures these predators and these monsters that jump around like ninjas and or travel at light speed like some of these hippos that dart past you at about 120 miles an hour they literally jump like they could I could be standing here on the road and it could charge me and it'll launch itself off the cliff all the way down there and run all the way back to try to hit me again so I know that there needs to be a lot of refinement that happens inside of the game itself but if we could see some of these things alleviated and changed it would make the player enjoy the game a lot more because the light bulb's going to go off in your casual player and in your seasoned survivalist gamer and they're going to say we've hit that wall we've hit that wall where we know that this is the same repetitiveness that we're going to come against we're going to see the same bastards of intellect that we do not want to participate in but because there is essences there we're going to go ahead and do them we need more emphasis on realm uh the realmic transmuter having the ability to play multiple cards to make those redundant uh minor cards more feasible in the future and we also need to see that you know the apex dungeons that they're significant in a manner where you could build you know better equipment by rare materials that are not found anywhere else because you can still find the pelicidic ingots from the hunt realms in normal mode and they're just as powerful as the pelicidic and uh, fabled giant sun giant ingots that you find inside of the apex realms but you get more essences and you get more ingots from the apex because it goes so quick um but just those are just some of the things that i see inside of the game but there is promise and the promise is because they are going to be following in the footsteps of hello games and no man's sky with their prescribed updates so if you've been keeping an eye on hello games and how they've been rolling out updates for no man's sky they do it quick and they do it in massive chunks i'm talking about it could be like a dlc that feels similar to what a you know full-fledged game is with some of the uh, expeditions that they have inside of that game some of the implementations that they've added with base building and uh, vehicles and things like that so and I and I honestly believe that this Fey orientation of these multiverse realms is not limited to just this time period I think that they're just testing this time period out because if you look at other games that are survival in nature they usually start from Stone Age which we got they usually move into the steampunk Iron Age which we're currently in and they eventually move into modern day and eventually into futuristic so you know with the development cycle that no man's sky has i think that there's a lot of promise coming out for this game and i'm really excited to see that uh as well as the addition of new realms uh to go ahead and explore like the winter realm i would like to see a jungle maybe a lava moonscape something like that you know that offers more depth and I'm, I mean that literally, like I want to see caves that intertwine and treasure that you can find and more recipes that we can go ahead and craft that we are not able to reg readily purchase and become OP like instantly. You know, we want to work for things. That's why we play survival games. But, you know, that being said, the game in its current state is very playable. I, you know, highly advise people to go ahead and pick it up and try it out. And you'll kind of see what's going on. Just remember that you're going to hit the wall at some point. And, you know, of course, it's a good thing. It says, all right, there's plenty of other games that are coming out. And again, you know, this is your game. Play the way you want to play. Have fun. It's our little playground, our digital playground that we like to visit from time to time. And, you know, thank you very much for watching. And if you made it this far in the video, please like, subscribe, comment. And I will see you all in the next one. Have a good night.